my wife and I first started attending the journey, there was this movement of saying, hey, as a church, we want to be for our city. We began to not just do a bunch of stuff, but we began to learn about, man, how does the gospel impact our city? How does the gospel impact this culture? And what are specific ways that God is calling us uh, to, to roll our sleeves up and get our hands dirty? And it's really through that that Mission St. Louis began to emerge. It's where we began to really take off. So as an organization, we do what I would call relational community development where we build relationships with our residents, our neighborhoods, uh, really with the intent of empowering them to transform their community. We do that really through three main ways. Uh, we do it through youth development, specifically focused on literacy. We do it with job and leadership training, where we're training men 18 to 35 to be job ready, to be leaders themselves, to be leaders in their family, to be leaders in their community. And then we do a lot of home repair with the residents in our neighborhood. I knew St. Louis wasn't a perfect city. I know we struggle with poverty and unemployment and broken families, but I had no idea the impact that sex trafficking was having in St. Louis and it's happening in our own backyard. But when I realized that it was an issue here, um, it was something that pierced my heart. I felt God's God telling me that I need to do something about this. And it would go beyond the four walls of our church. The Covering House provides refuge and restoration for girls who have been sexually exploited or sexually trafficked. We are providing counseling and group therapy, life skills such as cooking, nutrition, and gardening. We're also providing education to our girls. We are going to provide Bible studies and retreats. And so we are hoping to help these girls with comprehensive services that work together to meet all of the needs of these girls. I think as Christians that we're called to not only know people, not only talk to people, not only talk to people about the gospel, but really to love our city, to love the people in the city, to engage on cultural issues, to be in our culture, not to be watered down by it, but to be a vibrant part of it, even to attempt to influence it as we can from time to time. So ultimately, Midrash is a missional ministry of the journey. Our goal was to be the kind of people to be the kind of group that wasn't huddled inside the church walls and so we hold events and forums and all kinds of things way outside in the world uh, trying to engage with people really of all kinds of all faiths of all philosophies trying to create opportunities for conversations for relationships to engage on important issues and uh, ultimately as that develops to have uh, meaningful communication about the gospel. I think it's easy for any of us to just get comfortable and to stay where we feel most comfortable maybe even inside of the church our original Bible study that we had, we saw that problem, we saw that issue, and that's really what started Faith That Works, to help people to get out of their comfort zone and to be on mission. Right now, we are serving in the Horn of Africa with a Somali persecuted church. We have a network of 17 pastors, house church pastors, that are putting their life on the line for the gospel. We started in the Hispanic outreach with basically two families, and we had relationships, we developed relationships. Now we're serving over 140 families. We need volunteers. We see the potential here is immense. So there's nearly 100,000 college students in the St. Louis area, and we really want to see these students hear about Jesus and trust in Jesus. And so what we do organizationally is we meet them where they're at on the college campus, encourage them to investigate uh, the claims of Jesus. And as they begin to trust in Christ, we help them grow in their walks with God. Campus Outreach has been in the city now for almost three years. And over that three year length of time, we've seen about 80 college students or so put their trust in Jesus. You see students graduate off these campuses that we're doing ministry on. Uh, we'll see them begin to filter back into St. Louis, back into our community community into our church and begin to be lights and salt in this in this community. There's cities all over the country that, that are either feared um, or hated or they're even ignored. And East St. Louis is, is one of those. It's got its challenges, it's got its issues. But the gospel doesn't allow for any of those variables to be a reality. The gospel calls us to enter into East St. Louis, to, to love our neighbor, to engage those that are on the margins of society, to, to enter the place that society has forgotten. Rebirth exists to build leaders from the city for the city. So we really believe that the way to revitalize the city of East St. Louis is to build leaders among the city's youth that they then will transform the city of East St. Louis in the future. So it looks like evangelism, discipleship, 
holistic ministry, so community development, looking into housing, healthcare, education, economic development. Um, but for us, at the end of the day, the root of that is that the gospel is at the center of all those things. And at the center of all that that we're trying to do is to build young men and women of God from the youth of the city that they then will take ownership of the ministry and transform the city as they live and work in East St. Louis in the future. All over our city, all over the county, this church, there are people struggling with depression and anxiety and broken relationships and estrangement and addiction and all kinds of mental health issues. And they shouldn't be kept away from counseling if that's what they need. And so uh, the way that we determine what counseling costs for each person is that it's based on their income and, uh, and that's really all. For me, I see a direct line between, uh, between how people give and, and the space that God is creating for, for this ministry to go forward, for, for people to come and receive gospel-centered counseling, uh, because truly it wouldn't, it wouldn't be happening uh, without, the, without the generosity of, uh, of the people of the journey. We are doctors, we're lawyers, we're grant writers, we're artists, we're zookeepers, we're a bunch of people with disparate talents and skills, but they come together in one ministry area where our passions converge, which is loving our city, engaging the culture. We have the resources, we have the message to give a lost world. And so that's what compels me, that's what drives me. I think it's very biblical to, uh, to figure out and, and, and to, to walk through and wrestle with, how do I serve in a way that's not paternalistic or that's not, I'm doing someone's a favor, but I serve because I'm someone who's been transformed by God and I want to, to invest my life into others. When we really love one another, we understand what God has done for us. Uh, man, look out, look out. I wanna be a part of a church like that. I wanna be a part of a city that is like that, that people are continuously being reconciled to God and they're continually being reconciled to one another. Man, what a, what a beautiful place.